thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about whether you need this in your system or whether you should be thinking about throwing it out. So when I bought my van, it came with, with one of these. And at that time, I didn't have a solar panel on the, on the roof of the van. So the only way I could charge my house batteries was either through the engine alternator when the van was being driven or via AC power. But now that I've got solar panels, do, do I need this? And that's why I'm making this video because I've not come across any other video on this subject. And yesterday I was quite astonished really uh, to find out that this has been a real problem uh, and, 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 and totally disingenuous uh, when you have solar charging. So let me explain why. What this does is it's designed to protect the house, uh, sorry, the starter battery uh, from being drained out. So if you have if you don't have an isolator and you've left, let's say your fridge running and you don't have a solar charger and uh, you, you could drain out all your batteries and that's the reason for the isolator so that um, uh, power flows only from the starter battery to the house battery and that only happens when the engine is running with the alternator running. So that's the whole purpose of the iso isolator unit. It senses the voltage. If the starter uh, engine voltage is about 14 volts, that means the engine is on, uh, that means it's uh, able to charge a house battery, so the isolator then allows power to flow to the back of the van to charge your house batteries. But if you, subsequent to that, if you added s solar panels to your van, then this thing becomes bad. It's, I was shocked to find out how, how bad it is because first of all, you aren't charging your starter battery when you could easily be doing that since you're connected to solar. And um, secondly, I found the smart alternator that the Fiat Ducato has doesn't really charge up the house batteries much at all. It only provides, uh, based on my measurements, less than two amp hours of power. Uh, which is very low compared to my solar panels, which can uh, charge up to 13 amp hours. So that's like six times more. Um, so th there was no purpose. So all I did was remove the isolator and you can see the results here. I was amazed to see how the voltage immediately flowed from um, the back batteries to the starter batteries. So now I have the confidence of uh, perhaps rewiring my uh, USB power points in, on my dashboard uh, to, be, to remain completely on all the time because I know my batteries would never run out. I've got 300 amp hours of lithium batteries in the back. Um, that's just gonna, it's, it's gonna be almost impossible to drain out all the batteries no matter what happens. Um, so that's the exciting thing I wanted to share with you. Now, there are lots of technical information out on the internet on how to set up your electrical system but i just wanted to run through my system because it may be suitable for you my system is designed okay what are the what are the, what are the basic factors about my uh, system i've got three methods of charging batteries solar power engine power and the ac charger i've got 300 amp hours of lithium batteries I'm not going to go into the reasons why lithium batteries are so fantastic, but just take my word for it. They're fabulous. They're worth every penny. Uh, all you need to do is throw out your old battery, dump in one of these new lithium batteries, which have their built-in battery management system. So they behave just like a sealed uh, lead acid battery. So uh, all you need to do is make sure your solar charger is set to run as though it's a sealed lead acid battery and the lithium batteries will take care of themselves very well. Now, to me, it makes no sense to have a battery system and not have a proper way of knowing the state of charge of a battery. So in my system, this uh, ammeter system, this uh, shows me exactly what the charge uh, state of my batteries are. It, it is a very visual way of being able to tell how much juice I have in my batteries, whether the batteries are charging or draining at the moment. If it's flashing, I know it's charging. And the number of bars on that battery uh, symbol tell me how full my batteries are. 
uh, but like any system, there's going to be an exception. So this will measure all of my power usage as well as charging, but it leaves out the power usage of my inverter. And the reason for that is it is the only safe way, uh, the only right way of setting up inverter is connecting them directly to your batteries. Don't try and measure the amount of current that you're using with your inverters because um, they use up so much power that chances are, if you if you were, if you needed to buy an ammeter to me measure that kind of voltage, it'd be big dollars. So this is a very um, effective method. It doesn't cost much, and it's fabulous. It's available through uh, online for a few dollars. Easy to set up. Uh, all you have to do is make sure that the part of it that reads voltage sits at the very end um, of your negative pole of your batteries. So all all your devices come through that and then you, you'll be able to measure uh, voltage, I mean, a energy flow in and out. Now, the other way to measure your uh, voltage and be aware of your voltages is, of course, through your uh, solar charge regulator. So I've got the Epova Tracer 30 amp uh, model, again, a very popular model. Um, it's got the sections, the, uh, the six sets of um, connectors. So one pair is for your solar cells, your batteries connect to the middle pair and um, on the right side are for all your loads. So over here, the point I wanna emphasize is make sure, try and make sure all of your loads are connected here, including your fridge. Now, uh, there's a downside to everything and the downside to the Epova unit is if you were to accidentally touch this button here, you would, you'd be turning off your power supply to all of your devices, uh, which isn't a big deal because you'd know, um, you know, the lights would go off and all of that. But if you had lots of stuff in your fridge and you hit, you turn that off or someone touched that button without knowing it, well, you, everything in your fridge could spoil. So that's the weakness of the system. And also on the uh, display unit that I have on this side, the, the same weakness is, is here. If I were to accidentally press this button, it would cause everything to go off. So uh, the last part of the video will, will be to uh, give you an overall look at my system. So let's start with the charger. So back there is the AC charger. So that's what will charge the batteries if I was, let's say, in a caravan park and I've connected uh, to shore power. So that's my AC charger. All of my solar panels, and now I have a total of four panels. Um, they come through this main on-off switch, which I find to be very, very useful uh, because there are many occasions in which you want to turn off the solar just to see how much charge is coming through from your engine and whatnot. So everything from my solar panel goes in through this main switch and enters the solar charger through this pair of connectors. Uh, next up, my batteries are connected here and all the negatives of all of my uh, devices, and that includes the fridge, all my devices, includes the engine battery as well, and includes the AC charger as well. All of them come through here, and and so the current will flow through this little device, which is what measures the amount of current that's flowing, and that's what gets um, read out on this circular uh, it's, it's a real favorite of mine, which makes everything so visual and so clear for me. Now, everything should be, all your negatives should be connected to the chassis of your car. So that's what that is for. Um, the engine batteries are connected through this cutoff switch. And so I'm, I'm able to disconnect the starter battery should I need to or want to. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I can do that. And if it's left on, as I said, um, it'll charge uh, the starter battery as it charges the lithium batteries. Now, um, going on to all of the um, uh, loads, all, this is my, uh, these two bus, these two bus bars here, positive, negative, these are for all of my loads. I've got a main battery cutoff switch over here. This is my inverter, which as I said earlier, connects directly to my batteries. So um, that's that's it. That's uh, it's not nothing very complicated. Um, and it's all based around the solar charger. 
and that's my system. So I hope that this uh, video has been useful for you and uh, uh, leave me any comments on what your own um, experience has been and I will also leave comments below to update you as to how things are going on on my system. As, as I've said earlier, it was only yesterday that I uh, the uh, I got the brainwave to uh, disconnect the isolator I'm, and I'm really happy with the, the fact that now I'm, I'm getting voltage running from uh, my solar panels to my starter battery. I should be, you know, I should be all powered up. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.